So before handing it over to our speaker, I will introduce her briefly. So Amélie Charez uh, is a teacher of sociology at Collège Maisonneuve, and she teaches uh, at the, uh, CEGEP, uh, in the CEGEP system for 15 years now. She hosts and coordinates the community of practice, intercollegiate community of practice on inclusion, diversity, and success for the Institute of Research and uh, Immigration and Intercultural Practices and Inclusive Practices. So have a great webinar, everybody. I will now hand it over to our conference speaker, Madame Amélie Chanez. Perfect, so thank you. I will share my screen now. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, perfect. So uh, thank you, Nicole, for the presentation. I uh, made a great Prezi with a lot of uh, great animation in it, but you will see it with the link. I will uh, try and uh, uh, carry the presentation myself more so. So my name is Emilie Chanez. I am a prof of sociology at Collège Maisonneuve. And I have this great opportunity, this great pleasure to host this community of practice, this intercollegial community of practice on diversity and inclusion. And I will uh, host a webinar that will cover four sections. I will first uh, present uh, the... Uh, ins and outs of the webinar uh, on this uh, community of practice, what it is and all of that. And uh, what is IRIPI and the uh, community of practice that I host is uh, in IRIPI, it'll be the first section. Then we will familiarize ourselves. Uh, Nicole uh, was a part of communities of practice. Uh, maybe you uh, in the audience as well, you probably know something about this. So we will discuss and agree on what it is, and especially in the context uh, of teaching and pedagogy and what it can uh, be used for in a teaching context and what it looks like. The community of practice that I will present to you is essentially related to a Teams platform. So uh, it's, a dis it's a distance, a remote uh, uh, proceedings usually, but sometimes uh, also hybrid or in-person. So I will give you a virtual visit uh, of the community of practice. And uh, my uh, baby that was uh, born in January, I will present the initiative uh, that uh, just came out and we're working on in our community of practice. And it's the reading circle in uh, practical pedagogy. We've... Uh, uh, read and we've uh, uh, looked at experimental pedagogical methods uh, in our teaching, and it's uh, the Bell Woods book, uh, "Learn to Transgress, Apprendre à Transgresser," which was the first uh, thing we read. So let's start our journey through this webinar. So IRIP, you should know that IRIP is new. It's the last I there is uh, inclusiveness. So in 2009, IRIP was born. It's the Institute of Research on Immigration, especially in a professional context. It's in 2022 that it started very recently, the same year as the community practice was born. Uh, that came and added the last I, which symbolizes the intercultural aspect of it and the inclusive aspect of uh, all of this. So what is IRIP? It is a collegiate center for technology transfer. There are 59 of them in Quebec. IRIP is part of those uh, uh, centers for transfer of knowledge, for knowledge sharing, to build partnerships, to be connected uh, to uh, the community. And it will be all about social innovation, specifically new methods uh, of research, uh, focused on participative research and the different uh, themes uh, around racism, immigration, and inclusion. And so uh, the IRIP that I collaborated with in the last uh, year, so that's why the di director of IRIP, uh, 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 Madame El Aj, met with me, and she said, uh, there's a community of practice that is being formed, and I would like uh, you to uh, host uh, this community, to be the facilitator. So he gave me the history of this community of practice. I don't know if you're familiar uh, with uh, the Service Interculturel Collegial, Intercollegiate uh, uh, Collegial Servant. If you're interested, uh, you 
in the collegial in the collegiate community, you probably know. There's a lot of partners that have worked for many years uh, and try to um, have a common platform for resources and tools at the co college level. SIC in 2000, they did a consultation in 13 CEGEPs to paint a picture of interculturalism, uh, teaching practices, pedagogical practices in different colleges, different CEGEPs. You should know that SIC uh, was uh, dissolved in 2013, and following that, IRIP, following the mission of the SIC, has uh, created events to uh, participate at IRIP events uh, for uh, different uh, conferences, events, webinars, and events around uh, intercultural practices. So it is through these events since 2013 that has been named uh, at uh, um, on many occasions has been said that we would like people would like to have a space to be able to exchange discuss have a more a regular contact sharing our experiences and uh, uh, encourage discussion so that's where the possibility of creating a community of practice um, when Abib talked to me about that, I did some research on my end and I saw what SIC was doing. I said, oh my God, there's so many interesting things there. I'm interested in these things. And I think um, it would be possible maybe to uh, not uh, work on earth, but to en enrich ourselves, enrich each other mutually in, in, in CIGEPs and throughout Quebec and all the work that is done on themes of interculturalism, anti-racism, decolonialism, uh, inclusive uh, teaching methods. So yes, I wanted to be part of that, and especially in the context of a community of practice. And uh, so why a community of practice? Well, you should know that a community of practice, uh, the idea is the members that will share together knowledge, uh, uh, techniques, uh, information to uh, collectively build things together. So it appeared to be interesting. It, it seemed very interesting. My it just froze. Um, okay, there we are. So, um, the community of practice allows us to share experience uh, to uh, it's related to um, professional um, issues so people in the same industry talk about a certain subject we're going to share practices so um, for IRIP, these are all, all this is all about intercultural practices inclusiveness uh, that uh, um, is concerned with educational success of students so let's bring people together that will be able to share their experience um, IRIP has chosen to create this community of practice um, in an asynchronous way and on internet. It's the Teams platform that uh, we use. Uh, the idea being that uh, uh, discussing with 56, uh, contacting and exchanging with 56 colleges uh, uh, regularly with different interactions. Uh, uh, of course, internet is more efficient and uh, more useful in this kind of context. And you should also remember that a community practice members need to see each other as well. So they need to share experiences. There was uh, a will also to create events in this community of uh, practice. We're gonna see if my Prezi works now. Okay, so very important in uh, the practice part of a community of practice, it's not a, regular once it's not a one-time one-off thing it's not it's done and that's it no uh those who have experience with this it's a long-term thing that you can really build something it's been two years that i've been hosting this community of practice and there's a it uh, evolves organically it takes time for people to feel comfortable to uh, um, get to know the community understand uh, and uh, learn to interact uh, together and uh, uh, get to know each other. So we saw each other this fall to be able to uh, uh, better implement this community of practice. So I think it's really this year that it uh, is uh, starting to take off. And uh, before going further, just going to go back a little bit because Mano Richard was asking, would it be possible to know the results uh, with of the consultation uh, 
uh, with the 13 CIGEPs with intercultural practices. Yes, there was a report that was uh, published. I can uh, post it online. It's part of our resources in the community of practice. Uh, thank you. Yes, it's true. I had said that I would answer questions uh, 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 when changing section. So before I change uh, gears here, let's see if there are any questions. Uh, we're good. Okay, perfect. So there may be some among you that are saying, wow, it seems interesting. Well, I hope so. This community of practice, uh, why would I join this community? Well, the first element that's very important, I would say, in all practice communities, communities of practice, is specifically, I would say, IRIP, specifically is concerning inclusion, diversity, and uh, educational success of the students on the college level. So really, it allows us to uh, break our isolation, to break the silos. So I don't know if uh, all of you are here together. Probably it was because it was a community of practice that's interesting for you, or uh, uh, issues around inclusion, diversity, with regards to uh, educational success. So we uh, work as uh, educational professionals, as uh, guidance counselors and other professionals and teachers. We're interested in these issues of inclusion, anti-racism, and we can feel isolated sometimes. It depends on the CIGEPs, it depends on the environment. But I've heard members say, oh, I feel alone in my uh, college, in my CIGEP. And the community of practice allows me to not feel alone feel that I have a team uh, with me. So I that's beautiful, I, I think. So I was going to use that in my webinar, I told her, uh, this member who said that. So uh, thank you for being there, uh, the community of practice, because you're my second, uh, uh, I, you helped me regenerate and take a breath. And there are people there who can interact with me and who uh, understand and who work uh, at the same things I work at. So it's, it's something very important in the community practice is, is the people. So these issues, these themes will uh, be important to all these members that are guidance counselors, researchers, uh, profs, uh, teachers and all different uh, CIGEPs and colleges in Quebec. So it gives us a good uh, uh, view, a good view of the different issues. And so when we think about uh, different issues in the classroom, uh, anti-racism in the classroom, it uh, gives us a second look on things um, uh, with other professionals, guidance counselors, teachers, researchers. I find it's really interesting. Um, as a potential environment to, to uh, discuss and exchange uh, practices and experience. So, what is the uh, uh, what is our community of practice specifically? Well, the first objective is to bring together um, tools to have guides, information to uh, the, uh, the guide called Patrick Global is part of the documents uh, that uh, exist and that we use. So it was uh, one of the elements that uh, Habib uh, said that we need one place to include all these elements and CDP became that place. So I'm going to show you how we bring all that together in one place. We're going to do a virtual visit of the CDP uh, that houses all the documents. So the second objective is to exchange and share. So this platform uh, where we meet virtually, uh, also in person sometimes, allow us to discuss, to share uh, experiences uh, and knowledge and uh, information. So it's, a, it's really uh, important to connect practical and theoretical uh, knowledge. So that's another strength uh, that uh, exists in the community of practice that uh, we have a different views on things in, in theory and in practice. And the discussions between different researchers and stakeholders on the ground become really interesting uh, for uh, all parties. So the idea behind the community of practice is also to create uh, uh, events. Um, our first event was last year in June. So just before the IQPC, there was uh, a uh, anti-colloque. It was a uh, reflection on what it means to have an inclusive classroom. Why do I say anti -colloc? Uh Well, uh, uh, Ripi does uh, 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 conferences, uh, very interesting, but I don't work for Ripi. 
I'm just a member of IRIP that uh, uh, spent half a day working on this community of practice, uh, but I'm a fan of uh, their events and their speakers and their conferences. So I, especially in a community of practice, I wanted it to be the members themselves to share their knowledge. And so the idea is to say, hey, we have a bank of knowledge here. There are profs, there are guidance counselors that have expertise uh, on the ground that can um, also share their experience. So that's the event that we had. What is an inclusive classroom? These are members that shared their experience, their knowledge. Okay, and this is the last objective. This is the one that was like, oh, it's been two years that we exist, and it's great to have all these tools, but we have to develop. So the idea is we bring people together to see what exists, we can develop uh, new things. And that's where the idea of the reading circle came about. I'm going to present uh, that uh, at the in the last part of the webinar. I um, Closing this part here, are there any questions? Oh, wait, there's a question that just came in. It's Madame Lucien Tenimbeng, who is asking, is the community of practice open to guidance counselors at the university level? Yes. Um, in fact, it's, of course, uh, at the outset, the community of practice uh, was uh, for uh, uh, professionals at the college level. But you know that education is not a closed uh, uh, circuit. It's not a closed thing. So the uh, success of college students uh, depend on the uh, success in high school and at university as well. So yes, uh, it's uh, very relevant to have uh, the contribution of university uh, members. There are members that come from universities, profs, uh, guidance counselors, uh, and uh, researchers as well from the university level. Thank you. So it wasn't the end of the section. It was the, how many? People uh, are in the community, 250 members, the community of practice, um, and it's in 53 uh, different institutions uh, that uh, uh, bring together all these people. So that's very interesting in terms of networking as well. It wasn't the priority objective of the community of practice, but I would say that it's one of the elements that... Uh, uh, comes out of our first year uh, of activity. When you have 230 members that come from 53 institutions, well, these are all people interested in the same issues. Well, it's a great place to say, hey, I'm having an event, who wants to participate? So it's very much used to do networking, this community of practice. And uh, all the stakeholders in the uh, educational community are welcome in our community of practice. And that's what makes it so enriching is to be able to uh, be interdisciplinary, to be interprofessional. And uh, when I say interdisciplinary, it means that there are different uh, people with different roles, uh, guidance counselors, different uh, uh, profs, different uh, subjects. I have some teachers, uh, uh, profs that are in literature and languages, uh, philosophy. Um, uh, but there are also people in uh, social sciences and uh, technical uh, 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 aspects as well, technical um, uh, subjects like uh, uh, nursing, for example, um, nursing technicians who had to renew their program with certain skills that are intercultural. So the community of practice became an essential tool for those programs. Okay. And so this is now the time uh, to manifest your interest. So uh, if you're interested, you can uh, take a screenshot uh, or take a picture of uh, the QR code there, and uh, that will bring you to the first phase of becoming a member. It's not a selective club. Everybody can become a member, but there are certain things you must do. How do I know there are 250 members in 53 colleges? Because there's a form that you have to fill out. This form allows me to know uh, what expectations are with the community of practice. Uh, 
what resources do you have access to? What is your experience that you can share with the community? It's a great tool for me because as a facilitator, when people ask questions, uh, has somebody has ever done this or that kind of policy or this kind of thing or that kind of thing. So I can have access to information. I can uh, partner people. Uh, I can send private messages. So I can network uh, people together and connect them. So it's a great tool. You must just fill out this uh, short form and I will then invite you into the community practice. If you are from Collège Maisonneuve, it's automatic. I invite you, no problem. If you are from the outside, of, uh, you must accept the invitation that will be in uh, your email, sometimes in the spam. So it uh, says that you are invited to uh, be in this community practice in Teams. If you accept the uh, uh, invitation, then you will receive in your messages a welcome email that will uh, give you all the steps to follow if you're not part of Collège Maisonneuve to be part of this community of practice. So then you just have to participate because that's what a community practice is, is the members really. So I'm here to um, feed the interest, to connect people, but uh, what makes the community alive is that people are really try uh, starting to be comfortable with each other and uh, discuss and ask questions and think out loud and proposing new ideas, new activities, and launch invitations. And so use this tool. I'm telling you, and I repeat, I repeat this constantly, when you will uh, be uh, registered in our community, among those 230 people, there's a lot of experience. There are a lot of people with a lot of knowledge, and they have uh, uh, intercultural, uh, anti-racism experience, etc. There's a possibility to go and mobilize, use this knowledge and experience. Uh, use that. Use it. And... Now we're going to go to the next uh, section. Are there any questions, Nicole? Not uh, so far. I'm interested in your reading circle. Yes, it's coming up. So I'm just going to do a virtual visit, and then we will talk about that. So when you come in on Teams, you will see on screen some tabs. I uh, can't zoom in on this, unfortunately. Oh, well, yes, yes, okay. So uh, you'll have a, a uh, you'll see some tabs there on the left that represent different channels that are related to different issues and themes and that were created uh, from the forms uh, that the members filled out. What uh, subjects would you like to cover, for example? And uh, through these different subjects and issues, uh, themes, you can ask questions depending on uh, the content. So uh, within these uh, subheadings, there's uh, teaching, inclusion, intersectionality, racism and anti-racism, uh, uh, First Nations and immigrant experiences. And so what's interesting is that the resources uh, were put together in SharePoint pages. So uh, they were assembled that way. A SharePoint page is great. Uh, so when you go to the different tabs on the top there for each of the channels, the different subjects, you have access to a SharePoint. That is where you will have access to the reference documents. For example, I am in the decolonization and the teaching channel. I have access to ref documents, internet, uh, uh, do different documents, different reports, videos, uh, research reports on this subject. And so I edit the SharePoint page, but I invite members each time that there's something new to go and publish it in the, the this or that channel, depending on the subject. And I, so then I will add it into our SharePoint page. So um, some tools also were developed this year, uh, coming to the reading circle soon. But the interesting tool that was developed, there are members who are saying that it would be great if there was a calendar. Uh, so yes, there's a calendar. There's a tab called a, a, a DEI calendar and events where you can uh, go and see uh, uh, 
to get an idea of the the events coming up uh, it's a collaborative calendar so if you have any events that you want to add you can go and do that you have access as a member of the community you can go and add events to the calendar there's a channel that is calendar and events where you can publish your events and network and invite the other members uh, to participate so if you have any questions um there's an FAQ. We also created this year a library, a co-evolutionary, evolutive library, so a, a living library, I guess. Uh, there's a bibliography that uh, is evolving, that is a living bibliography, because we saw that uh, for each of us, whether it be a researcher or a teacher or a counselor, we are always doing research, a bibliographer research. So instead of doing that on our own, why not pool our resources and work on a common on the same page? So there's a channel that was created with regards to decolonizing teaching because a lot of people work on that right now. So the idea is to work together on a bibliography, a collaborative bibliography where you can enter some headings. There's a general section, but there's a section for each uh, of the disciplines, for example, in sociology. And so, uh, uh, sociology of decolonialism, for example. So there's a FAQ, uh, frequently asked questions, where it's, well, if I do this in my uh, CEGEP or college, is somebody there uh, have an idea among you? Uh, that if, uh, yes, hello, I would like to know if some of you have created an official policy for changing the first names like the uh, Mohawk uh, College. So, uh, uh, we we'll put that in the FAQ, and if it's a question that uh, you don't want your name to be associated with, you can write me in private, and I will publish uh, anonymously for you. That's uh, the virtual visit, and uh, now we're going to talk about the reading circle. Uh, are there any questions for uh, the last section before? Uh, so, Marie Pierre Lamar, who would like to have the link to join the community in the chat because she couldn't capture the QR code and she is a teacher that is uh, interested. I can send her the link. So Marie-Pierre, you will receive the link to the presentation. Uh, and in uh, the presentation, you can see the QR code that you can use to uh, join the uh, community of practice. So Amelie, if you have the link, you can just put it up in the chat. Perfect. So let's carry on. Um, I'm very proud to present, uh, it's at the first uh, steps. This is the first time we do this. It's a uh, reading circle and practical pedagogy, practical teaching methods. So we met uh, in person, a few of the members, during uh, the uh, networking meetings at Université Québécois, Diversité et Inclusion, Diversité et Inclusion at the Montmorency College at last November. There was an event there. The members are people that uh, you know, you're uh, educational professionals, you uh, have a lots of meetings, lots and lots of meetings, and you already have all these events going on. So I think that it's interesting to uh, think that we could join uh, different events. And so in the coming years, we're going to do that. We have uh, um, hosted a uh, reading circle for our community of practice during that event. And the idea was to connect with the members that would participate in the event, say, hey, we we're going to sit together and we are going to discuss what we want to do with this community of practice. And so, and how we're uh, going to uh, uh, take uh, charge of it. So there's two things. The members first said there's a lot of resources and tools. We have difficulty to uh, parse through all of it. There's a lot of vocabulary that is used. We'd like to create a common document, a, a common source of knowledge. And we'd like to also uh, align towards practice, so practical issues. So that's why we want to do a reading circle and practical uh, pedagogy and concrete pedagogy that was pronounced, presented to the members in January. It was proposed in January. So how has it worked so far? Well, I sent this in the main channel. This is the reading uh, circle that will be created. That uh, uh, This is what it will be and who is interested. So the members that were interested, I created a channel. Uh, specifically called the Reading Circle. And in this channel, we have discussed uh, the first uh, 
piece of uh, 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 literature that we wanted to read and discuss together. Uh, our choice uh, was the book from Bell, oops, Learn to Transgress. So apprendre à transgresser in French. So the idea around the uh, reading circle and practical pedagogy is to have a first meeting uh, where we discuss uh, together the potential, uh, um, the practical potential of uh, uh, pedagogy and reading this book and what we take from it and the different things we can apply in our teaching practices. So people who participated in this reading circle, we were seven during the meeting, uh, but there are 15 members of the reading circle currently, um, seven participated in the last meeting, and they we had a lot of things to discuss, and the meeting was only an hour, and if not all of us were there. So we have to find another way. We've, we thought of another way of doing it. Our collaborative work doesn't stop after the one-hour meeting. We created a document in which we share our thoughts, a, a research uh, a notebook, if you will, that will be a living memory of all our work that is uh, being done. Um, and uh, uh, one of the things we want to do with this is, well, that's why we have two meetings. First meeting where we uh, launch uh, a uh, whiteboard exercise and uh, different ideas and give ourselves two months to uh, uh, come up with different uh, uh, experiments or things we can do. And so how I can I, as a sociology prof, do more a liberation pedagogy? Uh, uh, so then I put uh, shared something that I wanted to experiment to try and take notes of my experiments and things I want to try. And then we would uh, uh, meet together two months later to talk about our different uh, trials and experiments and uh, try different things and prepare an event that uh, will bring together the reading circle this year. I like uh, to make it uh, useful and fun. So they, we, Prepare the annual event. The SAC prepares the annual event for the city pay the SAC de lecture. So uh, the reading circle. So I'm announcing officially that uh, the collective thinking exercise will be around liberation pedag pedagogy. And so the people who present during this event will be people from the practical reading circle that will come. Well, yeah, well, what is, what is, what is, what, is, what does this mean? Uh, well, if it's interesting for you, we will open up the event to a larger audience. Um, and then just the reading circle. So we're going to open it up to all the community and people who want to uh, uh, join our community. And it will be all about the potentialities around uh, Bell Hoops' book, What is Liberation Pedagogy? And uh, we're going to talk about how Bell Hoops is inspired by uh, Pano Freire, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. So uh, it's a, a great inspiration for Bell Hoops. So we're going to compare uh, both uh, books. We're going to look at the theoretical theoretical uh, elements and the uh, different uh, pedagogical theories, and we're going to have a larger discussion uh, during this event. There you go. So uh, the idea is to do it each session, each uh, quarter. So this is our first uh, one. There's already people say, oh, you guys, uh, look, it looks really cool. I want to participate in the second one, in the second circle. So I'd like to participate. So if you want to, it's possible. Uh, to uh, participate in this great initiative that will uh, be very promising, I think, and will be a channel uh, for the community of practice to be able to um, come up with tools that are uh, connected to our community of practice. So that's all for my presentation. I don't know if there are any questions. Well, no, there are no questions, uh, but uh, I have one Quick question, excuse my ignorance, but what do you mean by pedagogy of liberation, liberation pedagogy, and what is the relationship with the community of practice that you host? Okay, well, I don't know if you know Paulo Freire. Paulo Freire wrote a book called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, where he talks about uh, raising awareness and education and how uh, the education system can liberate individuals from their oppression how education liberates you from oppression. Uh, so uh, he will, Paolo Freire, will, uh, uh, it's a critique 
That's what uh, Bell Hooks was inspired by when she read Freire. She said, oh, wow, this is really what I want to do with my uh, teaching, with my pedagogy. So it, it's criticizing the banking system, the educational system. It's a critique of those systems uh, in the sense that there's a perspective where there's knowledge that is shared and the fill the students with this knowledge, and then we will try to evaluate what they retained of this knowledge, of this information. So Freire will have this critique and say that um, it uh, reproduces, it furthers inequality and oppression, and uh, class oppression, racial oppression. So how do we get the educational system away from that? So it's not me who chose the books the members wanted to be in and uh, in, uh it's a bit like a critical uh, theory anti-racism critical pedagogy on how to uh, think about how education rep reproduces further inequality and bell hooks uh, will say uh, as Freire says we can also think about how our teaching our pedagogy can liberate individuals and so i teach sociology and so how does that translate into real life uh, and do Pedagogy into teaching. Well, I'm going to talk about my experiences, my experiments that I've done. So I teach sociology. And as you know, with Lia, uh, it's more difficult to do evaluations. I also do evaluation of work at home. Uh, so homework. And so I uh, do exams rather than homework in class exams. So when I do exams, I don't like feeling that I am asking them to learn and something quickly and throw them into the water. So uh, for me, sociology uh, is uh, our tools for thinking. I don't want them to become sociologists necessarily, but I want to give them the tools to allow them to think about uh, different actions of society and uh, relationships. And so the whole social part of it, and this part of uh, economic, uh, the academic uh, sharing of knowledge. And so it allows us to think about and act uh, and maybe even change uh, things uh, a little bit. So that's what uh, uh, the pedagogy of the oppressed is all about. So I did an evaluation. And uh, so I uh, did a critique, of the, they did the critique of the banking system and the educational system. And so I didn't want them to have performance anxiety. So uh, I did, I said, okay, what I'm going to let them do is I told them it's an exam that is 20%. So I chose these 20% and these and these points that you want to cover. So at first meetings after our webinar today, um, I am anxious to see. And then I told them uh, five, five issues that you want to talk about, and we'll discuss them together. So I want us to leave the academic world a little bit and see how these notions uh, can be applied. You can understand them uh, and see them around you. So that's a way to be able to do liberation pedagogy, but there are all kinds of ways. So that's what we are looking at in the reading circle and uh, what uh, will be presented at the annual event, the beginning of June at KPSA. And so um, the members can participate in the KPSA. Beginning of June, there will be our event and to learn uh, more uh, and so I'm going to uh, to practice uh, before doing the exam. Uh, she, she, there's a time where the students uh, will study together and will prepare just before the exam and think about the questions, uh, potential questions, et cetera. So that also uh, uh, allows us to leave the individual part of it and think as a classroom. Uh, the collective is also, this is the uh, liberation pedagogy that uh, uh, to, to see this, the classroom as being a collective workspace uh, in um, uh, collective work. It's not just the teacher, uh, but also the, uh, the collective creation in the classroom. There's two questions I'd like you to answer very quickly. Is it possible, Isabel Delaj, is it possible to talk about the different channels of the community of practice? And the teams, that is the first, the main part, I imagine. Yes. Um, and um, so um, there's the channel on decolonization. There's the 
chat that will talk about uh, realities and LGBTQ plus uh, immigration, um, uh, the different realities and uh, of First Nations uh, peoples, and also uh, uh, to guide to talk about um, uh, difficult subjects uh, uh, in the classroom. Uh, and um, there's a channel that is on the FAQ. And there was one that has been created around uh, diversity, neurodiversity. And so that's also evolving and moving forward, depending on what the members would like to have. Um, okay, thank you. And Isabel also is asking the question, uh, in the, uh, the diversity, equity, and inclusion, there are many possible groupings. What are they? Well, I'm not a specialist uh, of DEI. My colleague, um, she uh, was, there's another community practice that exists uh, by EDP that uh, is uh, mainly around uh, DEI. And she will bring together people in the different institutions. Uh, and um, because uh, right now there's a, a challenge, uh, 5030, that uh, is around equity, diversity, and inclusion. That will be a challenge uh, uh, that will be launched for the institutions and colleges, different institutions that uh, are requested to participate uh, in this uh, challenge. And there's a community of practice uh, that is explicitly related to that. So um, if I would like to also have the uh, link for this community of practice in the chat. So you'd have to put that because our webinar is over now. It's almost over. So I want to also thank you. Um, I think you do uh, great uh, work. Um, so your enthusiasm, uh, your curiosity, these are all great uh, qualities that you uh, possess. And I would like to thank you for this uh, presentation. It was interesting uh, and uh, you uh, did a great job today. Thank you, Emily. So I will let uh, you put up the link and you can, uh, send, I will send it to everybody. Yes, I will share it with you. Okay. Well, thank you, Emily. And I hope to have the pleasure to meet you in person one day. Yes. Uh, thank you. And uh, welcome to the community. Uh, you can uh, uh, get uh, involved. Uh, it's uh, already done on my side. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.